and welcome to another enormous edition of the MCD Fennell Footy Show. All thanks to our great friends at the Betty Go Bank. My name's Andy. I'm joined by Mitch Tenning, the MCD Fennell Operations Manager. Mate, did you enjoy a nice cruisy weekend? Uh, yeah, it was good to have a week off, and I'm sure the uh, volunteers and club officials enjoyed the week off as well, and they're uh, keen to get stuck into the second half of the season. Oh, it's going to be uh, a great second half of the season. A lot of game-changing uh, matches that will no doubt impact the top eight over the uh, the next few weeks. Certainly going to see the ladder really start to take shape, and the beauty is we've got so many teams still fighting for positions in the bottom half of the eight. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of changes, I think, over the next few weeks in particular, and um, plenty of changes ahead for the rest of the season as well. Definitely right there, mate. And we'll look at the first big game uh, for this weekend. We've got a Voker and Newstead. Uh, the Bulldogs, uh, they've, they've been up and down a little bit uh, to an extent, but I think uh, Newstead, they haven't been in uh, too bad form. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to getting up and, and seeing this one, given what the Bureau is saying, and he's going to be bucketing down rain. But all eyes will probably be on the twos at uh, 12.55. Trevor Field will be running out for game 600. And it'll be a nice, hard, physical slog, just the way uh, he likes it. He's a sort of rough, rough as gut sort of character, and he'll embrace the rain, and no doubt the uh, the seniors game will live up to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Enormous achievement there for Trevor. But I think um, in a senior game, I think um, you're two, two bottom half clubs. Um, but if Evoca get up, they're on the verge of actually getting into the eight, so that's how close it is at the moment. Um, but Newstead will want to prove they aren't a bottom three club, and I don't think they are either, and I think they'll be able to prove that against Evoca. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, well, given the beauty, uh, the beautiful weather we've been having over the course of the season, this has uh, only really been the, s- the second wet day of the year, and Avoca did push Trentham back in round one when the conditions were wet. I think they've got the potential. If they uh, they get their full sides in there, they get Coglin back into the midfield, and uh, and he pushes up as a forward option. I think they can get back to some of their glory a few weeks ago when they had that big win when uh, Aaron Hanneman kicked the lazy 13. So I think the Bulldogs will be too strong, but geez, Newstead. They've, uh, they're a very proud club and they won't want to go down. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't be ruling out you said in this one. I expect it to be fairly close. Carisbrook and Melden, uh, the, the Bombers, uh, they've had brilliant signs throughout the year, but the uh, Redbacks, they, after that uh, slip up against Natty over a few weeks ago, they are really starting to fire up. They had that big win over, over Trentham in the, in the last outing where Ash Minari kicked uh, four goals in a low-scoring encounter. Wet conditions, probably going to see low scoring again. Uh, how do you see this one unfolding? Yeah, well, if it is wet, um, it, it can obviously make the game more closer than what people might think. Um, I, I feel Molden are a better club than a two-win club this season. Yep. Um, look, they were within a couple of goals with Natty last week, so that just shows where they're at. And I think after they've had a bit of a breather with the week off, they might... Um, they might try to get close to Carisbrook this week, but I still think Carisbrook will get it done. It really, really was an impressive uh, effort against the Swans, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's um, not many clubs are getting that close to Natty, and um, Natty are going along really nicely at the moment. So um, for Mulder to do that a couple of weeks ago, it gives them uh, good confidence this week. Certainly every chance of a bit of an upset here if they can recapture some of that form, as you said, but uh, probably not this week. Uh, next important game, we've got Harcourt and Navarre. We know the Grasshoppers, they are up and about, and the Lions haven't had a bad year either. Yeah, expect an absolute battle to here, I reckon. Um, could go either way. Uh, that top four spots inside for both clubs coming into the season. Um, and I think Harcourt will play a huge game given its importance. They'll see that they'll, they'll want to stick in that four and um, Navarre a real threat at the moment, I think. You're going to get value for money when you head over to Harcourt this weekend because if you look at the A-grade netball and you look at the senior football, they've got two games that are ideally placed and... Uh, I'm with you. I think Harcourt in both those games, I know with the other uh, netball, they're in a position where they need to win. It's going to be great against Navarre because Navarre's got that history uh, across their, their senior footy and, and senior netball. And, and here in the senior footy, they're certainly they're building that momentum, which is great. But Harcourt, geez, if they can get a big scalp here, that'll be outstanding. Yeah, Navarre is sort of, they've got their season up and going at the moment, but I expect Harcourt to probably stop them in their tracks. It'd be great for the competition just to shake things up a little bit. Uh, Lexton and Talbot. Uh, should be an intriguing contest. Uh, Lexon at their best is uh, very damaging and told that uh, they've, they've just had a great year. They're looking fantastic, uh, getting better as the year gets on. Yeah, I think um, Talbot will probably notch up their seventh win out of eight matches, which is um, unbelievable form for, for them. And, and they'll, um, you know, they'll all count when the ladder shapes up later in the year. I think Lexon will fight hard. They've had a couple of good, impressive um, games this year. And I would, uh, again, I think if the conditions are, are wet, it could be a close game. I think you mentioned a key thing there. Talbot's going for their seventh win in, in eighth games. Um, they're really the underdogs of the competition, aren't they? Because we, we talk about your, your Karras Brooks, your Natalie Albers, your Navars, but geez, they have just been ticking along nicely. They've been flying and they've been doing it under the radar, which is probably uh, probably good for them, but they'll have a couple of close games, I think, the next few weeks when they come up against some of those hard sides. Certainly a good chance to test themselves, and uh, if they get a really big win here, look out, just get that momentum ticking along nicely. 
A game that uh, probably won't be as close on paper, but you just never know. Natty Bialba up against uh, Campbell's Creek. I think the Swans probably need to bounce back with a with a good win here, given they were tested by the Bombers in their last outing. Yeah, um, yeah. Just said, look, it's top versus second bottom here, but I just hope Creek can get a couple of goals on the board, and um, you know, Natty can Natty will go in pretty hard, and I'll probably get a big win here. But um, I just hope that uh, Campbell's Creek can remain competitive throughout the whole match and put a four quarter effort in. Be very interested to see how the ground holds up as well after a complement of games uh, in the lead up to it as well, because uh, I know Natty Alec does get a little bit uh, heavy underfoot when the rain hits, and as uh, the bureau has suggested, uh, since uh, since sort of Tuesday or Monday night, the the rain has sort of steadily tumbled, so we might see some uh, inaccurate kicking, I think, and we know the Swans they'll uh, they'll they'll be eager to sort of keep the scoreboard ticking over nicely. Yeah, exactly, and I expect they'll uh, get a big percentage boost here, which will be very important come uh, the end of the year. Royal Park and Trentham, the uh, Saints were very disappointing against the Redbacks in the last outing, only kicking three goals for the game, and Royal Park, well, they probably haven't had the year that they've liked. Yeah, um, both clubs probably haven't really played at their expectations this year, um, but this game could get that changing for either club, and I think we'll have another battle here as well. Um, but I think uh, with this one, it's probably either way, to be honest, but I think Trentham will probably come in with something to prove. Yeah, exactly. That's the key thing. They do have something to prove because they started the year strong and then they've sort of dropped away. They were in the top four for a little bit and they've uh, slipped right off. So, But it, it is a great opportunity for Royal Park, who do have a good capacity to win these games, to uh, to ups upset the apple cart a little bit. The final game, we've got Denali and Meribar Rovers. Uh, the Rovers will be looking to get some consistency here and, and come away with another big win after a solid effort the previous week. Yeah, uh, Rovers will want to keep their season rolling, pushing on top four they are at the moment, uh, which you probably wouldn't have thought because they have been up and down so far this season, I think. Um, they'll want a big percentage boost, as a lot of clubs probably do, um, against these struggling clubs just to get that important uh, percentage for the for the ladder at the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely sensational. I agree with you, mate. Uh, percentage will count everything. As we highlighted at the start of the show, is really starting to we get a bit of a bottleneck in the bottom half of the eight uh, and just outside the eight as well. So a percentage is fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, we, we could not be here if there wasn't the fantastic support from the Bendigo Bank. In fact, on my way over to uh, Avoca this weekend, I'm going to be stopping over to the Bendigo Bank and getting some cash out to spend my hard earned over at Avoca just to, uh, to show a bit of support there. I'm looking forward to it. Mitch, thanks so much for joining us uh, on this edition of the show. We look forward to catching up with you later on. Good on you. Cheers.